Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. Today we're going to talk about the top 10 comeback cards in Hearthstone. These are cards that for a really long time saw very limited or no play whatsoever and we see them a little bit. We see them in most of today's games and they're cards that have really just begun to shine. There's more of these now than ever before and I feel it's one aspect of card design that is just not talked about. It's bringing back old cards through new mechanics. So you guys will see what I'm talking about. Let's get the list going. Number 10 on the list is Blessing of Kings. So Blessing of Kings is probably a card that you'd imagine would have seen play over Hearthstone's history. Well, you'd be pretty wrong about that. Midrange Paladin just had better ways to actually manage itself in the game. Uh, Blessing of Kings was very rarely, not never but very rarely used in aggro decks because it was better to play aggro paladin decks by dumping up your hand and playing divine favor. It can be very difficult to play Blessing of Kings and if you're going to dump your hand you're going to want to do so playing attack heavy minions while that was often the case in the last you know years of Hearthstone. Uh, more recently, the powerful early game drops are actually health stacked minions. We have a lot of health heavy one drops, a lot of health heavy two drops, and it makes Blessing of Kings a much stronger candidate on those cards because it's much better to have like a seven uh, health large minion than a five health large minion. Also, the main culprit to giving Blessing of Kings life is the odd and even archetypes. Even Paladin just included Blessing of Kings because the card pool was more limited. Limiting the card pool actually increases the diversity of cards. Crazy, right? Well, the best example of that is Blessing of Kings in recent times. Vanish. Vanish has kind of come and gone. It's, you know, been in the meta, I would say, in the last year or so with uh, Kingsbane rogues generally. I know Kingsbane is out of standard mostly. It's not a bad deck, but it's not what it was before the nerf, but it's still a very powerful wild deck. And we still see the card, but more recently with the mill archetypes, which again are maybe in the last year and a half or so, and the Kingsbane archetypes are about in the last year or so. Uh, Vanish traditionally, it was just a card that was laughed at, you know, return all minions to owner's hand. It's like, why would you do that? If you want to kill stuff, you use Blade Flurry. It's a card that kind of shined because, well, Blade Flurry got absolutely destroyed with nerfs. Miracle Rogue got just constantly nerfed, so we needed new ways to utilize the powerful spell mechanics of rogues. So here we go, Vanish ends up being the choice removal on the list. More decks are running death rattles, you want return mechanics, and well, all your other crap got absolutely nerfed, so it's time to try out Vanish, and lo and behold, it actually worked out pretty well. It's a card that came to light, yes, from new archetypes, but generally from Blizzard nerfing the hell out of all the competition. How about that? Mass Dispel is number eight on my list. Mass Dispel for Priests has been a very interesting addition lately. There's been a lot of decks that feature very powerful death rattle effects, very powerful buff effects, and Mass Dispel comes in and just obliterates them all. Uh, coupled with the fact that most Priest decks run some form of combo, draw is always very strong in combo, and mass silence effects are pretty rare. And actually Priest has the other options as well, but just completely countering the archetype and including every possible way to deal with death rattle minions ends up working out just about the best. Uh, mass Dispel traditionally was just a little bit too slow, but with a powerful board clears and most tempo from mid-range decks and even some aggro decks coming off of buffs and death rattle effects, Mass Dispel actually started working fairly recently. And it's a very interesting card because, well, you'd never imagine in a deck as slow as Priest that they could ever afford to play a card as slow as Mass Dispel. But it turns out the meta has changed things so drastically that it's actually possible. Sunfree Protector makes the list similarly to Blessing of Kings. It is generally a card that's used today because of even Warlock and because of the limiting of the card pool, because it is even only cards, it actually pushes these cards that have never really gotten a chance before into the meta. Uh, as a side note, Sunfree Protector uh, was in I would say it was in some of my decks early on in Hearthstone. Uh, Sunfree Protector used to give taunts to all of your other minions, and the card was buffed to only give taunt to the adjacent minions. 
This is in theory a buff because taunt is supposed to protect some of your other minions from being attacked. So if you want to, if you want to really keep one minion alive, you can taunt two other ones to really keep that one minion alive. But we obviously know that's not how Hearthstone works. The only real purpose of taunt in constructed play is to not die to aggro decks, in which case you want taunt on absolutely every possible being that enters your side of the battlefield as a control deck. So even though, you know, Sun Fury Protector was better than it was today. It's today that we actually see consistent constructed play. And even though I played the card a little bit way, way back then before the nerf, we didn't really have the tools to gauge how powerful those decks were. I can't even tell you if the card is really good in the decks I played it in. Uh, today we have those tools and we know it's actually one of the best cards to include in your even warlocks among some other more fringe type of decks. Next up is Twisting Nether. You'd think Twisting Nether is just, you know, absolutely crazy good card. You just kill all the minions. How is this not good in the past, Crip? I don't understand. You're just making this up. Well, Twisting Nether was actually a joke card until quite recently. It's just that Warlocks with an ability to have so much mass removal, the mass removal becomes stronger. So, the way you have to look at it is if you have like two board clears, you have to be pretty greedy with your board clears because if you use them when your opponent only has a few minions, well, then he might be capable to fill up the board and play another one. The reason Twisting Nether works is because Defile is so good. Because Defile is so good, you can run Defile, you can run Hellfire, you can run Shadow Flame, and you can run Twisting Nether. And basically it creates a situation where you have so many board clears, you can actually start to use your board clears to remove one or two minions at a time. You use board clears instead of just single target removal because you have so many. And Twisting Nether is basically the, the manifestation of, of this idea. If you have too many of one thing, uh, it, it's actually better to stack it even further than that. And Twisting Nether ends up in the meta somehow. Amani Berserker ended up in quite a few even decks, notably the aggressive ones. Amani Berserker is a card that we saw some play very early on when there were just no cards in the game in some of the aggressive decks. And it's kind of gone full circle to that. We have the standard format and we just typically don't get very many good two drops. And most two drops that we get are fairly defensively statted right now. So aggressive decks, they have to look at the options. They have to go back. And in this case, they have to go way back and it turns out Amani Berserker is one of the very good two drops that are still left in the game and with them not creating too many new ones again it's come full circle and and it's back in the meta Amani Berserker is actually played quite a lot these days now the last four on my list they are, they are really quite interesting. Number four is Light Warden. Light Warden is obviously played in Heal Zoo, and I never in a million years would have thought that this card would be played in any deck ever. Um, you know, there was, there was one deck like ever that used Light Warden. It was Priest, obviously, but it used it through Light of the Naris. They threw a different card that actually had a very powerful and very flexible effect. And it was on a spell, which you can manipulate through other means. Light Warden as a standalone card is just so terrible. Yet in Heal Zoo, somehow it works. You know, you just, it's, it's such a colossal threat. Uh, the one drops and the two drops that we've been getting in the last few years have been so defensively statted that Light Warden in Heal Zoo actually is the exception to that. And the only card that I think beats that in the same archetype is the next one, Voodoo Doctor. Obviously, it's in Heal Zoo as well. But if you gave me Voodoo Doctor, who would ever think that Voodoo Doctor would actually be played, not just like in, you know, standard whatever, played by whatever. No, it's been played in one of the best decks in the last, like, year. And, like, it's, it's a key, it's a vital part to the deck. And the card sucks. and so terrible. Not just that, again, right now in Hearthstone, we have the most information 
ever. We can, you know, through different websites that exist, Hearthstone Replay, whatever, you name it, you can see the win rates of decks, you can see the win rates of cards in those decks, you can see the win rates of cards when played or mulliganed for in those decks. So it's not like, you know, yeah, someone put this in a deck and it did it okay. This this card, this set of cards in Heal Zoo is we know from the statistics that it is incredibly powerful. Voodoo Doctor in 2019 is incredibly po- powerful and popular. Mind-blowing, isn't it? Well, maybe not quite as much as Raid Leader. Raid Leader is a card, without saying too much about it, it's a card I just used to make fun of. It's like, how does this card exist? Why would you ever, ever play Raid Leader? Well, it turns out when you have a critical mass of small minions generally produced by the Odd Paladin effect, Odd Paladin hero power, it's actually really good. Raid Leader ends up doing quite a lot of damage and you're playing in an aggressive deck where you actually have automatic card generation because your hero power is basically a card. If you use your hero power and it's the odd Baku upgraded Paladin hero power, two mana, two one ones is not bad. So yeah, you can actually afford to run Raid Leader and in that type of deck, it actually works really well. And the single most shocking card for me that it made a comeback in any way at all ever. In my opinion, one of the worst cards ever in Hearthstone, Wind Fury Harpy. Yes, guys, this card has seen competitive level constructed play. Uh, you, You may not have seen it because it often doesn't actually get played, but this card is or has been used in the past and even Paladin. The way it's used is The four drop, the corpse taker, that takes effects from your deck. So it's really easy to get a lifesteal effect. It's really easy to get a divine shield effect. It's really easy to get a taunt effect, but it's actually really hard to get a wind fury effect, let alone in an even deck. Basically your options are this one. How insane is that? One of the worst cards ever in Hearthstone's history is actually included in one of the best decks at a time where we have the most analytics about the game, so we actually know just how powerful it can be. I really love this aspect about Hearthstone, and I'm really curious to see if you guys have anything to add to the list, as I think this is the kind of card design that we have to appreciate. Cards that uplift old cards that never before had any chance in the game. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys in the next one.